All right. So uh, I had a question from somebody called Stormblessed. That's what I got that right from the other day. They asked me why I didn't play much of Mortal Kombat 10. And the reason for that, there's a few reasons actually, right? Um, I remember first trying out the demo when it first came out. And it was okay. Like, you know, it felt very different in movement and speed to Mortal Kombat 9. So, but hey, this new Mortal Kombat game, I was willing to give it a go. Now, when I actually bought the game, I actually bought it on PC, right? And for whatever weird reason, High Voltage, which was the port developer at the time, now it's QLock, decided to release the game on PC in slices. Meaning that basically you would download, I think it, I think it ended up being like four gigabyte, and I'm like, wow, this game's really tiny. You load the game up, there's nothing else except like, say, single fight. You had like two characters and one stage. And then you get on the forum, the developer's like, no, oh, don't worry about it, the rest of it will come later. It's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? The game should be there now, right? So this was one of the issues that really soured my initial impression of MK10. Even though it wasn't something directly related to the game, it was just like one of those things like, man, what are you doing? And this didn't just take a day to resolve itself. This took, I think, maybe from memory about a week, give or take. And it was really, it was just terrible. Like, like what they did, I, I, from what I understand, what they did is that on a console, right, you put the disc in, it starts to install the game, it gets to a certain point, and then you can keep playing the game. It's almost like they tried to take that logic and apply it to PC gaming, except we don't put discs in anymore, right? Everything's digital. So if you just let us have the whole game. Outside of that, um, there's a few sort of nitpicky things. Like I mentioned already, the gameplay felt a lot different. Um, it was the first time I noticed that they started sort of changing how the actual female characters looked in the game as well. So that was a big contrast from MK uh, MK9, massive change. The roster wasn't too bad, initial launch roster wasn't too bad. Um, but then of course in this game, they actually ramped up a lot of the guest characters as well. So that sort of, that was really sort of telling. It showed their pathway moving forward that they were going to you know, heavily invest in these guest characters purely just to get people like normies to get into like the Mortal Kombat franchise. Um, which is a shame though, because people used to get into fighting games because the fighting game was good. You didn't need little carrots on a stick to try and get people into the game to actually play it. So, uh, and as you guys know, I'm not exactly like the best like Mortal Kombat like uh, gameplay connoisseur out there um, but I did I didn't really invest too much in the gameplay I, I played a little bit of Scorpion played a little bit of Quan Chi and of course Scorpion was great because he got his leg take down I was very happy about that but one of the stark contrasts in this game that really stood out for me was the variation system it was the first time they ever introduced it into a Mortal Kombat game since the 3d era but it was different because the 3D era, we had the different stances that we could swap between. Originally, it was two martial art unarmed and then a standard weapon. And then it dropped all the way down to one standard unarmed martial art and a weapon stance in MK Armageddon. But you could swap between the two and neither one affected your actual special abilities. You still had all your special abilities regardless of what stance you're in. In MK10, they made it so that you actually have to choose. It's like, well... <clears throat> If you, if you want to have these abilities, you've got to miss out on those abilities. You want those, you've got to miss out on those. I didn't really like that. I just prefer to have a character stacked and just let me have some fun. That's it. I don't want to sit there like some, like what we found in MK11, where then it got even worse. We had to pick and choose stuff, or we couldn't have certain things together because it would conflict. I don't like that in a fighting game. Just give me my character, stack them up. They also introduced something in this game, which was like, it was also the first time we got sort of like a, essentially like a, a hybrid online system. Meaning that they brought in this system that allowed us to choose a faction. And then within that faction, um, you know, we had access to like different say fatalities, that sort of stuff. Uh, it changed the background of the stage. We, you know, it's a nice touch, to be honest. I wish something like that was in MK1, where we could change the background. So mix it up a little bit. Um, but I, I the, the faction stuff, I never sort of 
heavily invested in because essentially it was your faction warring against other factions and then you'd fight you know together to try and build up essentially the the rep and and whatnot to you know win over the other factions that you're competing against i understand the idea in principle but i don't think it worked out very well because in the end it never came back right um so as far as like the graphics go like just even like just playing it a bit before just to get some footage um it does look pretty good considering to this day but what they did tone down things on was like the battle damage you know they introduced things like sweat so sometimes it almost looks like you know little tiny raindrops you know from the sweat just from the sweat itself on the, some of the characters uh, it was certainly um they certainly had a lot more detail in the characters from mk9 but the tone of the game and i know a lot of people love this like i do like that sort of like darkish tone but darkish not fully dark right um and it sort of felt like that was going in that direction as well some of the stages were okay like this stage in particular was a really nice stage um as well you know really sort of like physics with the waves and stuff and when the body popped up you could actually grab the body and use that but it was also the first mortal kombat game where we had interactables as well i never liked interactables in an mk game it's just it's just shit now in saying that though you could argue that you could go back to the 3d era and go well you know you had stage interactables with fatal instant fatalities or transitions to different stages sure but in a 2d environment sort of flipping off something and flying through the air this is where it started to feel like injustice right because and i've said this for the longest time injustice has infected the mk games it actually feels like and i know this would be like a really hot take but it feels like the only time sort of to a degree when it came to gameplay wise that it felt like injustice didn't infect an mk game was mk11 because MK11, while we still had the interactables, uh, even more so by picking up weapons, that sort of stuff, I, and th you know, we could throw an old lady, I think, in MK10, couldn't we? Um, the, 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 the gameplay itself felt very grounded. I really did sort of prefer that. I don't really care for flying all over the screen. The characters felt more heavy, more dense. Um, and I kind of, sort of, I liked that a little bit. You know, I didn't, you know, c coming from, say, MK10, but again, I didn't play a whole bunch of this game because a few of these things really soured it. Now, the crypt itself was really cool. You know, it was like a step up from MK, MK9s, although I still like MK9s, right? You can still target stuff that you want, still had the jump scares. You know, it looks really good. Um, they were really sort of like pushing forward graphically in almost every metric in this game. Um, they still had like the X-rays, you know, come back, which was nice. Um, you know, I think we had some stage fatalities. I don't know if they were there from launch or they got baked in later on. I'm pretty sure from memory they got baked in later on. Um, but I don't know, man. It just, it just didn't really grab me by the nuts, right? It was the same feeling I got with Deadly Alliance, right? When I first got hold of Deadly Alliance, yeah, I finished it and stuff, but like, it was like, man, this doesn't, there's something just kind of, it's not really got the hook in. Right? There's no real, mm, like, real hook into the game. And you can be a Mortal Kombat fan and love MK games, but sometimes there's that thing that really sort of grabs you and wants to sort of really, like, pull you into the game and, uh, and get you excited about, you know, uh, investing in it. So while, like, even with this, you know, this uh, online benchmark that they're doing right here, it looks beautiful, the rain effects, I actually do like that sort of thing. Um, so there are actually some nice positives but some of the negatives like really overshadowed it, choosing, you know, variations. Uh, obviously the soured PC experience for a while there it really sort of annoyed the piss out of me. Um, also, I found that the online lobby section was also a step back too. You know, like it's sort of, I don't know, I just kind of, I think MK9 really spoiled it for me. I think that was part of the problem. MK9 was really, really special, really special. Um, and in some respects, it felt like MK10 was very much the beginning of where we are at now with MK1. You know, this very sort of, um, you know, very sort of diluted experience. They've really toned things down. They tried to go with a much more sort of cinematic approach, a uh, much more realistic approach uh, when it comes to the characters and, and uh, all their sort of things like their uh, X-rays and, and fatalities. And it's sort of, yeah, it kind of, I don't know, it kind of just didn't really stick. Even though like I'm looking at the roster right now and I'm like, yeah, that's not a bad roster. 
Some of the new characters, you know, I didn't care for, like Devorah uh, or Kotal Khan. I certainly didn't care for the combat kids outside of Takeda uh, because I felt like they were just, you know, it's like, well, we've got Sonya, we've got Cage, right? We've got Jax. Like, do we really need them, you know? Um, and I mean, thankfully, at least at the moment, we don't have them in MK1. Uh, although there's rumors that they may or may not be, I don't know. But, um, you know, I don't know. I just, like, I can look at it graphically and go, yeah, this looks good. This does look really good. Um, you know, the speed's fine, but the gameplay felt very different from MK9. It just felt different. Again, I'm not an expert, but it just felt very different. The animation felt off. Uh, there was even a video that was done a very, very, very long time ago where somebody broke down the reason why why do the characters in Mortal Kombat 10 look very different from say previous games or other fighting games and that was because that when they looked at it like the way that the characters were standing and stuff they actually didn't stand like a normal person in a fighting position it was sort of weird they kind of like had disjointed hips and, and positions and and stuff like that so I think I think the one of the best examples they used was like Katana like the way she kind of like stood there didn't look natural didn't look good to the character itself um, so I don't know I mean and also and I don't know if it, if I don't know if this is a thing but I had the same feeling with MK4 we got Shinnok as a playable character again in MK10 in MK4 he was a playable character and of course in MK4 and also MK10 guess what Shinnok is the end boss and MK4 was the very first time that we actually had an end boss character playable in the roster now obviously we're forgetting games that were just basically like all blowout ones like Trilogy and Armageddon but it was the very first time in a Mortal Kombat game like a proper sequel that we actually could sit there and use a boss character just normally it's like that took away the fear and the excitement the anticipation of finally getting up that ladder to facing off against Shinnok and they did the same thing here again they just they just stuck him in the roster it's like what are you doing like you know now from memory maybe somebody can remind me maybe you had to unlock him by beating him the first go but then again, he's then he's there again, right? So there's no more fear. It's not like you're playing MK1, MK2, MK3, uh, Ultimate MK3, where you know you had to fight all the way up, and you could never, ever, ever play or experience Shao Kahn or Goro or Motaro or Kintaro any other time, except for when you get to the top of that ladder and hoping that you're able to beat them. And that was the thing too. I, I just. I, I think that even like with Deadly Alliance, I think the end bosses in that were like Shang Tsung or Quan Chi or whatever from memory. It's been a long time since I've played that in terms of like going the end of the tower. Um, you know, Deception obviously had Anaga, which was great because you couldn't play as Anaga, right? So there was that fear of anticipation. And then of course in Armageddon, you know, again, it was all a blowout. So yeah, you had access, you know, it's Cinder, but uh, not Cinder, bloody Blaze. Oh my God, I was thinking of Killer Instinct then. Um, Blaze, but you know, because I was, <laughs> the reason why is because I was remembering Blaze in like, you know, how he looked in, um, in the previous games, right? In the 3D era. And he looked literally like Cinder from Killer Instinct. That's what I had in my head, you know mouth is speaking faster than my brain so so yeah so we had everyone available you know in armageddon um and that was fine but that was kind of like trilogy it was just sort of like here you go here's everyone have some fun okay um it was also too like you know i mean like we still had obviously the intros for each character was okay you know uh it was also the game you can also see in the right there it was the first time we actually got things like quick fatality token right that you could, uh, I don't think you could buy them as DLC or anything like that, but that you could earn them in the game. Um, and I'm like, really? And of course now, guess what? They made a mainstay since. Um, I don't understand why they need to do that. I think it's absolutely stupid. Just make the fatalities easy, right? Fatalities, it doesn't matter about input anymore. Nobody cares. Nobody's getting, oh my God, how do you do this? Nobody cares. Just let us hold a button, press 
up, down, you know, for each fatality they got, and that's it. The brutalities take a lot more skills, sort of, to a degree, you know, depending on which one. Uh, I like compared to the fatalities, but yeah, I didn't care for it too. Um, and so, therefore, you know, while I can, like I, could, like I said, I can look at this roster and go, yeah, these are some really awesome characters. Obviously, characters like Reptile were very much like more Reptile form. I didn't like how they changed, like they were going in this path with Ermac turning into this just this floating mummy type character. Never really liked that. I do actually like how he is in MK1. I think it feels like it's pulled back more. You know, he's on the ground. You know, he floats a little bit, but he feels a bit better. Um, and that's just nitpicky stuff, of course. Uh, and also, we didn't get that many stages either, right? I actually, I'd have to check. I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure MK10 probably had the least amount of stages um in almost any mk game obviously you know foregoing say something like the original Mortal Kombat. um so these sorts of things kind of like these sorts of things kind of all culminate together and i'm not saying that it's a shit game right because i couldn't stand mk11 right because that really felt like injustice too you know all the gear pieces and and you know just i don't know it just they, it, it, they just, and of course, all the interactables and everything like that, they really pulled everything from Injustice and stuck it in the MK game, right? Then they went even worse with the fatalities and like, you know, I don't know if you guys remember the reports of people at Netherrealm actually getting PTSD from actually investigating cadavers and mutilations and stuff to try and get these fatalities looking as authentic and as, you know, disgusting as possible. I mean, we don't need that sort of level of detail, man. You don't need that. You don't need that at all. Um, if anyone's old enough to remember, back in like Samurai Showdown, you used to be able to kill people. Right? I think it was one of the first games. Was, uh, I'd have to check timelines, but I'm pretty sure Samurai Showdown was one of the first games you could actually kill someone. And it was just as simple as just like cutting through them, or maybe a stab. You know, a little bit of blood spray, or they just like slide in half, but there was sort of no blood and guts and stuff like that. I don't require that level of detail, you know, uh, in the game. Now just looking at the towers too here, these look really good. These towers actually do, compared to say MK1, actually look really good. Everything's like really dark and sort of like, you know, leaning heavily into Mortal Kombat. And that's the, the one thing I want to finalize before I go. MK10, as we all know, is one of the darkest Mortal Kombat games that came out. The story was shit, by the way, just absolute dog shit. As soon as I saw Quan Chi riding around on a horse, my dick went limp. Like, as soon as, I'm just like, Okay, that looks really weird. Like, that looks really, really weird, right? It just, that just threw me for a loop, right? So, um, I didn't like that at all. It was, I don't know, it was weird. I know it's a nitpicky thing, but I'm just like, man, that's kind of dick, you know? Um, of course, yeah, we had the living towers, which was basically modify, you know, modifiers on each tower. Um, yeah, so the dark tone. Given... Like, this was also a window into where they were going with the fatalities. We saw what was happening with that. Um, you know, and as we've seen in MK11 and of course, you know, MK1, they got more and more gross and more and more detailed and it all started here. It all started with MK10. And that's because obviously they changed engine or, or at least use a modified engine. And that's also when I noticed that we felt like Mortal Kombat was starting to feel more like a horror game than a mystical Asian tournament. I love that mystical Asian feel. I don't necessarily feel that with MK10. I feel it with MK9. Um, I didn't necessarily feel it too much with MK4 either. Right? And there seems to be a little bit of a connection there between the two. Um, you know, like I said, with the whole um, uh, Shinnok thing being playable. But the... The dark, the dark tone started going heavily into like sort of horror themes, with fatalities, the way they're detailed were, you know, um, slicing faces off, all that sort of shit. Um, adding on to that, they also added a lot of horror themes, or sci-fi horror theme type characters as well into the game. Um, and it sort of kind of never recovered like from that for me. Now, keep in mind, like, the crypt in MK11, I thought was pretty well done. I thought that was really good. Um, but then MK11 felt more like a Special Forces game than it did, you know, 
or, or it didn't everything even from the music to the menus and stuff didn't feel like a Mortal Kombat game um, and listen, I've been playing MK since the very beginning, right? So I'm not going back like two games in NetherRealm's history. I'm not going back to the 3D era. I'm going, I go all the way back. And so my memories and stuff start from the original MK and they start leading up to what we have now. And so my brain sort of goes comparison, 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 and just go, yeah, no, nah, yeah, no, nah, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Right, so that's where I get at, right? Now I notice little details here too, like when you change the character here and it's raining, you know, like they're all like they're all dry and instantly they start getting wet. So they, they sort of introduced some cool little details like that into the game. But it didn't really grab me. I wasn't overly flussed about say Byrai Trial as a DLC character. The tribe was alright. Uh, all the horror characters you can see over the far left. I didn't care for them at all. Um, overall, not a, not a bad roster. But I could have easily taken out all the combat kids and brought in characters that we were missing from MK9. Like, easily. Easily, right? Um, and, I, and I never would have cared. And then they sort of stuck to their guns a little bit by only keeping uh, Cassie and Jackie in MK11 and, you know, getting rid of Takeda and Kung Jin. And now we don't even have any deals, any uh, combat kids at all in MK1 outside of Takeda. But, but Takeda is now an old man, right? So they've completely, like, gone past that whole, like, kid era. Um, because I think I think the problem is that, like, you know, it was too much of a... It was too much of a, um, you know, oh, well, oh, here's, here's, the, here's the younglings of these characters, you know, and they got similar stuff, but they've also, you know, I don't know, man, it just threw me, right? And then the characters look really, like, fugly. They were starting to be covered up a bit more. Um... You know, versus what we had in MK9. I mean, to be honest, like if you look at previous games to that in MK series, they were far sexier than what we got in MK10 either, right? Um, and the reason people go, "Oh, why do you care so much about women being covered up?" It's not much. It's not so much that. It's about seeing the change in direction that they're going, right? I felt it in MK10. That's when I first started to feel that. Hang on, something's changing here with. The state of this game why are they like why are the women fugly like why are they doing that why are they covering them up a lot more than what we previous had in previous games including the 3d era right including the 3d era um you know and also too like just look at the roster here like we had goro playable in here too again i sort of i again this is an old school thing but i always sort of think of characters like goro kintaro motaro shao khan um, Shinnok as characters that should, you know, unless you're doing like a massive all character roster, you know, like an Armageddon 2.0, they should only be kind of like boss characters you fight. Um, Goro wasn't playable unless it was a secret cheat in MK4, um, but he was the he was the sub boss to Shinnok. Um, so you know, like, there's this there's sort of there's the niggly bits, niggly bits are kind of sort of you know, annoy the piss out of me. Now, obviously, MK10 was a very popular game when it came to the esports scene, and that's fine. I never really cared for that. Again, I didn't play a whole bunch of this game, really. You know, I just played bits of Scorpion. This is one of my favorite skins of Scorpion. I do like the fact that they're skins. Still, I actually do prefer skins over gear pieces. Um, and I actually don't mind what they've done in MK1, having a skin and a gear piece. That the, the gear piece itself is the identifier to the character itself, like the mask on a ninja. But, in saying that, though, um, yeah, like, I, I don't know, man, I, um, I would all, I'd always take skins, I, I always do, we need better skins in MK1 anyway for a lot of the characters, but that's another story. Um, but yeah, so, it's sort of, yeah, like I said, the, the, there's a few things there that kind of never really got the hooks in for me with the game. Now, obviously, competitive-wise, it was very popular, uh, I didn't care for the story, so, you know, outside of that, I didn't really have much of a hook to load the game up and, and play it, you know, over anything else. Um, and, yeah, and I, and I actually kind of was hoping that, like, uh, MK1 was going to be the change to that. MK1, I think, has probably the superior roster out of MK10 and 11 and MK1. MK1 is the clear winner there. It just feels like we've got almost the best roster you can imagine out of those three games. But outside of that, yeah, you know, like, 
um what else you know what else is there you know like i just i don't know man you know they sour the experience for me to a degree with what happened on pc um but it's not a bad game like keep in mind like i you guys know i'm very vocal against mk11 for a lot of reasons um just in just in how it feels like i i very much i think a lot of people like that you know you pick up a game right and this is sort of something a lot of people don't seem to want well, not a lot of people but some people don't seem to understand is that you can pick a game up and you can start playing it and be like nah, nah i'm just not feeling it right and you don't want to sit there and have people go well give it 20 hours and you'll be fine bro there's so many games out there i don't want to spend 20 hours you know what i mean like so um yeah so it just sort of really didn't have that hook it felt like we're starting to go a horror theme type with these games seemed to get worse than mk11 um and i'm just not a big fan of it in terms of that like if you if you if i had to choose between mk10 mk11 and mk uh, well mk1 or mk12 right i would definitely choose mk12 or mk1 over the other two definitely over the other two uh, we've got a lot of stages. They got rid of the interactables. Um, it's the best roster out of all three. So, and that's good. But, um, you know, also this, yeah. Uh, but, you know, things like menu, like as a downscale, even from MK10, MK10 menu was better. Um, but also, yeah, I don't know, man. That, that's, that's probably all I've got to say on it, really. Um, like, I, like, again, like it's not a bad game. It's not like it's a shit game um at all oh yeah that was the other thing too that's the other thing that really pissed me off you know when you go into the move set so this is the first time i saw it when you go into the move set compared to mk9 to mk10 in mk10 it feels really messy right because they go you know they'll have like the move and then they'll have down like the enhanced move and then they'll have different variations that enhance move depending on what it is like depending on positioning of the the special ability on the stage right and it just felt like, I was like, holy shit, this feels really messy. Like, you, you do that. You go back, you go to MK9. And MK9 feels very, sort of, um, uh, very, like, more condensed, right? Obviously, there's less information, right? I'm not against the extra, I'm not against the information explaining stuff. Like, this is what it will do, that sort of thing. But it, it sort of felt like the lists were very, like, dragged out, you know, to make it seem like there's so much in there. And it's not. It's like, look. I know, I know we can enhance the move. Do you have to tell me like three different times? Like, oh yeah, you can enhance it this way and then this way and this way. It's like, okay, sure. Maybe you could somehow condense it a bit so that way, you know, it's a little bit smaller of a of a menu, you know, to to look at, right? Um, so yeah, that that kind of bugged me a bit. You know, that really bugged me as well. Um, and I don't know, it just sort of felt very all over the place. I don't know. But that's just my personal opinion, right? Uh, you can also see down there too, by the way, before we finish, the skip. So you can actually skip fights as well. Right, so if you're finding a fight too difficult, you skip it. You know, as dark as this game is, it almost feels like it was one of the softest games as well. You know, easy fatalities, skipping fights, you know starting to cover up with the women, uglifying the women, you know, changing the dynamic of a very Asian, mystical, centric themed MK game to, you know, what feels like horror light. And then it sort of went from there. It's just my thoughts, it's just my opinion. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it there. Let me know what you think. Catch you next time.